So today I'm going to talk about Linux Ready, RV, GC, and this call with architecture extension. So I, um, I didn't know that Changhua also has uh, some introduction about Andis, so let me skip this part. Uh, what I want to stress is that uh, Andis, before we adapt RISC V, we have 10 active uh, Andis call v3, and we upstream all the major tour, uh, GNU tour, OpenOCD, uh, U-boot, Linux, and so on. So through our experience with uh, <coughs> so many customers, uh, diversified needs, uh, we learn a, a lot of stuff from them. Uh, for example, uh, some customer was wondering who's going to need more than 16 interrupts, while others, even in a two-stage pipeline, they need more than 100. And uh, as far as the processor's uh, internal latency, some never ask us that question, but some care, ver care about it very much. And <coughs> regarding the uh, computation DSC and SIMD, um, some looking for the efficiency for audio voice type application, and that's based on the uh, existing GPR and the same multiplier data pairs. But when you shoot for high performance, I definitely think that what we have currently, a scale of vector uh, with a dedicated resource, that, that's the way to go. And we also have customer needing cache supporting write back <coughs> and write through at the same time. And some even want to load read-only data from interaction cache. And some may think uh, a GNU compiler or LLVM uh, are the most popular, but others think it otherwise, because m there are many different uh, uh, compilers out there and in different uh, applications. <coughs> so, <coughs> and this approach to RISC-V. I think that RISC-V has a very good start, concise, modular, but one side doesn't fit all. So extensibility is very important, so that we leave more space for, cu uh, for custom uh, extension, custom innovation. And also, the architecture profile are the right way to go. So I think uh, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, so with this, uh, ND star v5 uh, um, architecture, uh, new generation architecture adapting RISC-V, uh, we add predefined useful ND extension we learned from the past. And we also provide a powerful tool uh, for custom extension framework for uh, domain-specific acceleration. And uh, we also want to push uh, the feature we think is important for the compatibility through the task group. So we are pretty active on that. And this is an elevator I, I took uh, on um, one of Taiwan's hotel, just to show you that there's no four. So that's why we skip from V3 to V5. OK, so our goal is uh, taking RISC-V mainstream. So we know x86 and ARM have their place somewhere, but uh, RISC-V want to target for all computing devices. So there's a lot of place we can start, and maybe eventually we're going to go back to, to these two markets. So um, and to start B5 extension on the baseline part, we have some instruction to reduce the path length uh, with similar computation complexity. So this is for performance. And we also have cosine reduction on top of the current XC extension. And um, we are um, promoting the uh, DSP SIMD uh, based on GPI that talk, talk about. And so Chang already covered about this. And so we welcome uh, interesting party to join to let uh, make a P extension a, a good one for everybody. And we also have custom instruction. Uh, basically, it's a powerful tool to simplify new instruction creation for our customer. And um, so this is for SOC architects and designers with or without CPU background. So you don't need to be a CPU expert to, to adding instruction with our tool. And uh, other non instruction extension, basically uh, CPR-based. Uh, uh, this morning, uh, Chris talked about the uh, NDS has vector a prick with priority preemption. We also like to see uh, work together to have the fast interrupt proposal become a standard. And we have stack protection, uh, power break, uh, we talked about it before. And we also uh, want to um, enhance cache, cache management with finer granularity. This will come from a couple of customer requests. And we also want to support uh, write back and write through uh, simultaneously. Um, so uh, based on the V5 architecture, uh, we already um, deliver N25 and X25. One is 32-bit, the other one is 64-bit, and we design from scratch. Uh, so we uh, official release in the last Q4. And um, so this based on the uh, RV IMAC superset. It's five-stage pipeline, configurable multiplier. 
uh, optional branch prediction, uh, memory subsystem with local memory, cache, and optional parity or ECC, and bus interface, uh, JTAG, and so on. So uh, two sample N25 configuration at uh, 28 nanometer HPC. In a small cosine, it, it, uh, it's just about uh, 37 kg, and running 1 gigahertz, worst case. In a large configuration with cache, branch prediction, and so on, uh, it's, uh, it's about 160 kg and can reach 1.15 gigahertz, also in worst case. So this is what we have. Now, uh, so uh, new V5 call coming this summer. It's not a movie. Uh, so we have four uh, 25 series coming. And so we will maintain the similar frequency. So N25F and NX25F is uh, adding 14-point support. Going to talk about that later. And A25 and X25 is uh, adding MMU and also SMO support to running Linux. So uh, we think we have high performance 14 point support uh, based on uh, RV, FD, single proceeding and double proceeding, and multiply, multiply uh, add and sub, and fuse multiply accumulate uh, is one cycle uh, issue rate and four cycle latency. And divide square root can be 15 cycle for single proceeding and 29 cycle for double proceeding, and they run on the background. And we also adding extension for half proceeding. Uh, basically, it's a low store and do the automatic conversion. So this is for uh, um, machine learning and when you uh, have the scalar code and this will be useful. On the MMU support side, we support the SV32, 39, and 48, and all the page size. And uh, for entry or A entry, uh, micro TLB for instruction and also data. And we have four way uh, set associative shared TLB. So our design goal has been performance efficiency and use that to <coughs> try uh, uh, low power. So in the generic performance part, uh, I think our performance is 20% higher. For example, our 32 bit uh, core mark is uh, almost 3.5 um, core mark per megahertz. And our cache support here on the means. So that is the, to optimize performance just with minor addition of the hardware. So the program can continue execution when the miss is still ongoing. And uh, talked about earlier, hard proceeding, 14-point uh, low store with auto conversion. So it reduces the memory footprint and the cache misses, and definitely also leads to a, a low power consumption. And also we support uh, hardware. In hardware side, we support misaligned access because we know uh, right now the majority of the existing software running on two process architecture which support misaligned access. So we think this is important. Because without uh, the hardware support, when you get misaligned access, you're probably going to take about 100 cycles uh, in the exception handler. So you may be able to optimize a little bit, but I think there's still quite a lot of cycles there. And uh, our cache also support low power. Uh, we use only single ported SRAM and to reduce the area and also, po also power. And we, our cache also designed for fast, large power down and wake up. And uh, last, our RTL design is for high clock gating ratio, so we can reach almost uh, 98%. <coughs> so next, we're going to talk about NDIS custom extension. So through this AC, <coughs> we allow custom to add in scalar instruction, or vector instruction, and uh, instruction can be single cycle, multi-cycle, it can run on foreground or running on the background. And the operand can be a standard operand, which uh, take uh, just like existing uh, standard instruction, take immediate, take GPR, or take uh, baseline memory. And, or you can design um, custom register or custom memory with arbitrary uh, width and number. <coughs> and also operand can be implied. In that case, you don't, uh, it doesn't appear in the instruction, so don't consume uh, encoding space. So, um, so all this can be also generated by our tool called Copilot. Uh, including um, OP code assignment, all the required development tools, like assembler, disassembler, debugger, and also the system file for compiler, and simulator. And more importantly, is all the housekeeping RTL code, including instruction decoding, open mapping, dependency checking, input access, and output updates, all generated by uh, the compiler. So you don't only need to focus on the functionality 
designed by the instruction. So they designed the instruction, look like they are doing the ASIC design. And also we uh, generate with con uh, waveform control files. So in case your art here for the functionality is complicated, you will need to look, look at the waveform. And we have very fast turnaround time. So you can run it on your desktop instead of you need to send your design to a vendor's website and then and download it later. <coughs> <coughs> so here's the example. So uh, we're going to do an inner product for 264 one byte data, that is uh, 512 bits, 2512 bits. We're going to do inner product. So uh, assume um, one of the input is um, uh, less change, so we put that into uh, we call coefficient register. And uh, the other one keep mo uh, changing more frequently, so we put it on the memory. And once you, after you do the computation, uh, you would, the result generated to the GPR. So that all defined in the open uh, attribute. <coughs> and C sim is used to define the C, using C sim, uh, to de define the semantics. Here we're using a multi precision library, so you can have uh, 512 bits including shifting, masking, and get 8 bit and do the, do the uh, multi multiplication. And the latency uh, here, when, if it's constant, it uh, implies to the tool that you want to do multi cycle control, so we do that automatically for you. So, that, so, so the uh, left side is enough to generate everything except out here. Okay. So with the uh, RTL showing up here, this is a so-called concise Verilog. Uh, you just write down the code, uh, expand it, uh, so that you describe uh, the two uh, vector dual multiplication together. So you refer to operand by the name defining the operand. And definitely this is probably a little bit tedious when you have 64 bit of that. So we, are, we enhance it so that you can, for this kind of repetition, you, can, you don't need to expand it. But this is not, not the most important thing at this for now. So with this uh, instruction, you can do, you can get a speed up of 85 because you need to do low and um, uh, load the data and do the processing and buy the standard C code. <laughs> and compiler uh, compiler will automatically generate uh, the intrinsic function you um, call uh, uh, AC underscore uh, inner P, and then so you can put that into your C, uh, real C program and to get the to measure the speed up you get with original C code. OK, <coughs> um, so we also uh, work with the community to bring up new software to ev everybody. Uh, for example, uh, we work with StrayX to pull their, uh, I'm sorry, we work with ExpressLogic to pull their StrayX 64-bit uh, version um, over the, to RISC-V, and it's already used by a storage cust customer. So it welcome everyone uh, if you want to need uh, uh, StrayX 64-bit, you can talk to uh, ExpressLogic. And we're also uh, working on to enhance the QEMU enhancement, uh, because currently um, we have so many different extensions, but not all the uh, implementation really supporting everything. So you should get uh, exception in one case, and, and, and uh, no matter if it's a standard extension or custom extension, so the behavior will be different. So we are working with uh, uh, working to make it quite efficient for people to adding the stuff in. And so right now, uh, in this uh, AX25 platform already ready in, in QEMU, we already have uh, partner already using it. So, uh, so Linux uh, already off trend, but it's not ready without a supporting component. So uh, we uh, um, put, uh, put it U-boot and off trend it, and we have the maintainer now. And uh, OpenSUSE, they actually, they like to uh, uh, pull the UEFI, and they found that we have the uh, for risk file. And we found that uh, they found that uh, we already had U boot on our platform. So so uh, they talked to us and we give them the QEMU and start porting the uh, OpenSUSE on top. And uh, we also have uh, other uh, very good performance uh, enhancement tool, a uh, measurement tool. They are uh, perf. We are uh, just submitting and then in in the process refine it. F trace, uh, function trace. A module, loadable module, we already up trim it, so welcome everyone to use it. And um, so um, since OpenSUSE is not here, I just want to say a couple words for them. Uh, so OpenSUSE is one of the major Linux dis distributor distribution, and they are, they are among uh, w one of the first for full RV64 target. And uh, so they are working on the, this uh, uh, embedded um, base root requirement, and that's kind of part, that's superset of 
a UEFI. So looking forward to that. Hopefully, next time they can come here to talk about open source themselves. So in the conclusion, uh, RISC-V is emerging as a major application platform. And then this over comprehensive RISC-V solution. Uh, so we have uh, six uh, RISC-V CPU. So N25, X25, a fast and small core for control test. And we, we're adding uh, a folding point to enable the uh, RBGC core uh, for folding point uh, computation and also uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, we have a series core with performance efficient application processor. And we have AC for domain specific acceleration. So that's kind of separate licensable for all the NDIS core. And we have very strong tool and software support. So, um, so let's work with you for your next SOC project. So with that, I conclude my talk.